Hi, Smasher. So you might remember that in our previous episode, we talked about blocks and transactions execution. And at the very end, we mentioned that there could potentially be a few issues with the way we build blocks and execute transactions. And what we'd like to do in today's episode is explain how we tackle those issues and how we solve them. So here with us, as always, Nam Nelke, Space Mesh Chief Architect. Hi, Nam. Hi. Um, yeah, so last time we said that um, that when we build blocks in, in Space Mesh, we don't necessarily know for certain what the history will be, right? So uh, this doesn't allow us to validate transactions before putting them in a block. And it might cause transactions that are already in a block to be later deemed invalid or, or discovered to be invalid. Um, so this uh, doesn't sound great, right? Because it basically means that we might have um, uh, content in the block that is garbage, right? Or content that, that doesn't serve anything. And it can be even worse uh, if you consider the, the adversarial uh, scenario uh, where um, adversarial miners could uh, intentionally put spam into blocks, right? Just put transactions there that are uh, invalid and, and don't cost anything to anyone and, uh, and force everyone to store these transactions, right? So... Um, we have a solution for this. Um, it's not entirely uh, hermetic, let's call it, but it's uh, it solves the problem uh, in most cases. Um, and we call it optimistic filtering. And the idea is this. So when there's no attack going on, um, then each layer will be agreed upon, let's say, um, successively. So when, when you agree on what the block is for layer 501, you already know uh, everything that happened before. You already know all the blocks up to layer 500. You've already executed everything up to that point. And, um, and you know what, what the result is. You know what the state is. So um, we take advantage of this. And we basically say that when you create a proposal to put transactions into the block, um, you also include another field um, that says that can says can say one of two things. Either it it can say um, there there's something missing in my history. I don't know, like there's a missing block um, that I haven't executed yet or something. And and then we we can't do optimistic filtering, or or I'm against doing optimistic filtering. Uh, or you say, okay, I've run everything up to this point. I know what the state is supposed to be right now. Um, and and this is what, what I think the state should be. And when I when I say this is what the state should be, what I mean is you basically send a hash of the state. Okay, a, a state. It's called a state root. Um, you send the, you send the state root inside your proposal. When um, when we then create the block, we look at all the proposals that made it into the block, and if a vast majority of these transactions um, say that they uh, that the miners that created them. Um, saw all the blocks up to that point um, and, um, and, and, and provided the state, the state root up to that point. And they all, they're all in agreement about what the state root should be. So there's no, some, there's no um, um, weird instance of consensus failure where, where different people think that the state should be something else. Um, then- And wait, it, and is this a matter of Numbers statistically, like should there be like a ninety percent consensus, or it has to be a hundred percent? No, no, it's not a hundred percent. I don't remember the exact uh, number, but we we basically left a little bit of room for um, in case there's there's some like uh, adversaries that are just trying to like mess up the system, and they're miners. They could theoretically just put some mm. random number there and like mess it up for everyone. So we don't want to make it a hundred percent ever uh, with these things. Uh, but but it is a vast majority. It's more than two thirds. I don't remember the exact number. Maybe it's eighty or ninety percent or something like that. Um, okay, cool. And um, and then in this case where almost everybody is in agreement that um, we know what happened up to this point, then we can take advantage of this information when constructing the block. And the way we do this is by constructing the block sort of like blocks are constructed on. Um, on other blockchains. 
uh, we take each candidate transaction. So we do the same process we would normally do. Um, we take uh, the transactions from all the proposals, we put them in a big list, deduplicate, shuffle them. And then instead of just including them in the block one after the other, we also execute them one after the other. And we um, validate, we validate each transaction before executing. So we check that it actually has enough um, uh, uh, money to cover gas, that, that it has uh, the correct signatures and everything. And we only include uh, valid transactions in the block. Whenever we encounter uh, uh, an invalid transaction in our list, we just skip it. We don't include it in the eventual block. And because everyone that does this process has um, the same state, then they're expected to all um, reach Come up the with the same result. Exactly. Come up with the same mm -hmm. block, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're a miner and you see for some reason a different state than what everybody agreed it should be the state, then you can't generate this block because you don't know what the state is. You only know the, the, the fingerprint, right? You only know the hash of the state. So uh, you can't generate the block in that case. You have to, which normally everybody generates for, the, for themselves. We don't like send it over gossip, the block. Um, but uh, in that case, you have to just um, ask your peers, basically. You have to ask your neighbors. You have to say, I can't produce this block. Can you please give it to me? Uh, and I'll just execute it. Um, uh, and obviously, this is also like an indication that there's some issue, right? Either there's some attack going on or you have an issue internally, a bug or something. So this is something we'll notify the the user on if this happens. And, and what happens then? Is there some kind of self-healing or... What happens? So it it depends. If the if the reason your state is different, uh, if if the reason is that you may not have seen the agreement on a on a block in a previous layer because you were offline briefly or because messages are delayed and don't get you don't get to you uh, in the right order or something, then there's nothing you have to do yet, right? You just have to obtain the block, keep it, and then when the time comes and you uh, learn what the previous layers were. Um, then you execute those and then you get to this block. You already know what the right transactions are and you can just execute them. Um, <clears throat> but uh, if it's something else, if you reached, if you if you saw all the previous blocks and you still reached a different state, um, then there is some issue. Um, and we'll notify the user about this, basically. We'll say, hey, there's a problem, right? You can't trust what your node is saying. So this is either because there's a bug or because uh, there's some attack. But regardless, you can't trust anything. So if you're about to like uh, sell someone a house um, for for money you got over the, the network, um, you shouldn't give them the house until until you figure out what, what's going on uh, in this situation. But th again, the situations like this can happen with any blockchain where there's like lack of, uh, of confidence right. on what the current state is. Uh, and, and it's expected to be very rare or uh, either rare. I mean, it all depends on how you look at it. If you look at it from a benign standpoint, then it's very rare. If you look at it from an attack standpoint, then causing this situation will be very expensive. So um, right. and, and again, this, this distinction exists with every blockchain. It's not like we're doing something special. Um, uh, that's it. So, this so that's optimistic solved, filtering? Yeah. So this, this basically solves the problem of uh, spam transactions that people put there on purpose because um, under normal cir circumstances, you won't be able to because of this feature. Um, and if there's an attack going on, then, I mean, yeah, if you if, if somebody has a large uh, a portion of the network uh, under their control and they're wrecking havoc, havoc then they can also uh, put spam in blocks. But this is like the least of our concerns in that situation. Um, <laughs> that's it. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, we've just learned about optimistic filtering and as always, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments, either on YouTube or Twitter or our discord, and we'll be happy to answer them next time. Thank you, ma'am. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.